PM. The chef, like all. You know, uncountable, really. And the music was just absolutely kick-ass, man. I tend to, to hum, uh, chefs music in my head quite often. While no official recordings were ever made of Chef's music, bootlegs of his legendary sound do exist. First time I heard Chef was on a bootleg of Love Gravy. Expressing love so sweet. I mean, this boot was passed around from engineer to engineer for like two decades, man. You know, they laid it down on reel to reel, all right, and then they, they pressed it to vinyl, they pulled it back down onto an eight track, then a cassette, then a CD, and now it's been remastered to that! Oh! Somebody was in my car one day and they had a chef tape. And they put it in, and I said, what the hell is this? And, uh, you know, it was... It was who's a chef. Like all true masters, he's always been slightly ahead of his time, so people haven't really understood his, his complexities until, until years later. From punk to metal, the 80s changed the music scene. You know, back when me and the guys from Twisted Sister were starting out, there was this guy around the scene, Chef, and he was such an inspiration to us in our music. We drew so much, we took so much from him. He got us pointed in the right direction, and then he just disappeared. Well, I was moving on up in the business, you know, and along came that twisted sister crap, and I just went on and quit the music business. I'm glad he quit. I'm glad he quit, though. I'm glad he quit the music. He gave us all a chance, I mean, because we had no chance before. Chef, where are you? I... We're waiting for you to come back. A disillusioned chef headed west. I was heading to Las Vegas to work at Circus Circus at the all-you-can-eat buffet. Sadly, a career under the buffet big top was not to be. My car ran out of gas in South Park. Well, I took a job to earn some gas money, and after a while, I kind of liked it, and I decided to stay. The biggest misconception about Chef. Uh-oh, here we go. Is that he's the only black person in South Park? People assume he's a black man, or I should say Afro-American, because um, obviously he's, he's, he's dark in color. Um, but Chef's parents were actually two uh, Norwegian immigrants. It's just one giant birthmark, at least that's what I'm told. For years, Chef lived a quiet, small town life until one day his world was shattered. I can't bear to see that. We got a fax from Elton, Elton John, and uh, he told us of, uh, of Chef's problem. It was such a painful day that day. So immediately we, uh, we helicoptered back to the coast and uh, and uh, contacted Chef immediately. Chef's problems began when he heard his old music on a new hit record. Recognizing each note as his own, Chef didn't demand cold hard cash. He only wanted his props. So many songs seem to sound familiar. There are only so many notes to go around. They're not inventing new ones. <laughs> I was completely repulsed. That, that the industry would have such disrespect for such a great, great figure. Charged with harassing capitalist record, the lawsuit against Chef was devastating. The judgment, which was in excess of $2 million, made an absolute mockery of our judicial system. Well, when we found out that Chef was having a legal problem, we were just uh, sickened, shocked, <laughs> and stunned. This was not a case about one chef in one small Colorado town, all right? This was a case that represented we as a people, the Americans as a unit, liberty, justice, the freedom to do what we want to do, sing if we want to sing, not sing if we don't want to sing, cook, not cook. This is why I went into para law in the first place. Mr. Chef, you've been found guilty of harassing a major record label. The full fee of $2 million will be handed over within 24 hours. They came from all corners of the music world in this chef's hour of need. Did you know some of the biggest stars in the music world gathered in South Park to help an old friend? Yes. They put on a benefit concert to be made into an album called Chef Aid. I heard the chef was thrilled when all his rock pals showed up to help him. He said it's the most fun he's had since Katie Couric. And you know, she loves his Salisbury steak too. <laughs> I mean, I mean, he's going, he's going through hard times right now. We're doing this chef aid thing for him. Being part of chef aid really, uh, you know, signifies what what the '90s are about. You know, it's a it's a it's a group of people coming together to 
you know, to support a common goal. I'm going to do it. I'm definitely going to do it because, you know, anything I can do to help this man out. You know, I was one of the first people to get on board for the, on board for the chef aide, you know, when I heard he was having all the financial problems. And so here I am. You know, friends ought to be news, not misused, and I'm here for chef. I got on the horn. I called the most greatest prominent chefs around. We went to farms, we went to chicken coops, we went, we got the green beans, we got it all. We put on the most elaborate spread you could think of. Oh man, I want to tell you something. When, when people first heard that Chef was in trouble, man, they lined up around the block to help him out, man. I mean, it, you know, it's been a real rock and soul reunion, you know. Okay, thanks for coming to Chef Aid, everybody. Are you ready to rock and roll? Chef Aid was recorded for a CD, which arrives in store soon and features a rancid California sun, ass sun, banana, Joe Strummer, but a rockin' world, make no mistake about it, Primus, <laughs> Ozzy Osbourne, Your colour shine And Elton John Wake up when Smell the I just think it's going to be a fantastically successful album I hope so, you know, for everyone's sake If Mr. Palmy up now and say, clean my boots, I'll be there, man I'll be, I'll be cleaning these shoes, for him. Yeah. he's the coolest I'd do anything with the chef, so um, I may even pawn some of my jewellery for him now While his music and his meatballs are legendary Chef's real passion is passion You know, he had so many amazing women around him. You know, he was he was the man of the seminars. Next on Behind the Menu. Comedy Central's Night of a Thousand Bleeps presents the New York Players Club roast of Drew Carey. Drew Carey is a stupid f***ing pig. The told of Cleveland. The boil on the scrotum of a syphilitic donkey. I the chef walked in. It was all over, baby. They were running to him. So he sat me down and he said, Diener, you gotta keep it real for the ladies. Chef was a man who was no stranger to the gentle curves of a ladle or a lady. Chef's greatest appeal is that he's plugged directly into the spinal core of where love meets funk. He taught me a lot about sex, too. He taught me about how to make love to a woman. Um, you know, a lot of technique. When a man loves a woman, and a woman loves a man.